Hello and welcome everyone, I'm Maddles and now I've got game number two of this best of three and oh that felt so funny in my mouth because I said a now rather than today I have. I said now I've got, oh no, it all went wrong, I feel like I should redo it, it, it didn't, it, it was all wrong. It was like husky going, it's, it's husk to the husky husky rather than h to the husky husky, it just wouldn't work. Anyway, enough about that and more about this game, spawning down in the bottom left hand position. As the Red Zerg player. Representing Team Liquid. T L O. And his opponent up in the top right. The purple Protoss. It's Patience. Who I suspect is going for a gateway expand. The map is Yonsu. That means TLO probably won't be risking a hatch hatch pool opening because that would be ballsy. And while TLO is an awesome guy, it looks like instead he's going to be going for a temple. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he is. Good times. Temple is always fun. Um, so yeah, with the temple coming down, this is going to lead to some very interesting situations. Especially when we went and see how Patience decides to open. It should be with that gateway, as I said, so it's not like he's going Nexus first or anything like that. But still, temple double <laughs> extraction trick. Wow. Okay, Tilo is trying to really push this now. Only just dying his Overlord. He is going to be getting out a good number of Surgings very, very quickly. Patience, meanwhile, is just getting down his first gas and is about to go and take his natural... Oh, well, not quite yet. He's going to go and scout, and then he's going to take his natural base. But first, scouting. Scouting is always important. Do it. Just do it all the time. You are not a pro... Well, you might be a pro player. If you're a pro player, hi, you're awesome. If you're not, scout all the time. You can never scout too much in StarCraft 2. Knowing what your opponent's doing is critical to being able to appropriately prepare for it and counter it. So yeah, scout as much as you can. Anyway, probe coming in. Patience is scouting and patience is awesome. Tierlo, though, is... Not going to leave anything to the imagination is boom. A whole host of Zerglings come out. And now Patience is like, ah, ah, ah. That's an early pull. And so quickly, starts trying to get out a Zealot and getting that pull off round the back with the Cybernetics Core. But is TLO going to be able to do much damage? You've got to keep an eye on it. For the moment though, TLO just pumping out more Lings. Should be about to go and take his natural base though. So for the moment, it was just a 10 Ling opening from a temple. Is he going to be able to achieve much with it? Let's take a look. So, for the moment, Patience just keeping that Zealot in a nice, safe position. TLO is really just playing the smart game of just moving back and forth. And Patience is also being very patient and not rushing anything. Not trying to move out too far forward. Does get his Zealot a little bit trapped, but the Mothership Core is now out on the field. So, that can start chipping away at some of these links. And actually... I'm surprised that TLO isn't being more aggressive with these Zerglings because he can pick off a good number of probes before the Mothership Core was able to actually kill the Lings. So TLO only managing to kill a single worker so far. That isn't really enough as far as I'm concerned. He's not done enough damage to warrant that heavy of an opening. So as it stands, TLO is a bit delayed in his hat tree coming down. His third is also delayed as well. Yes, he's made it a bit longer before Patience has taken his own natural base, but Patience is still teching solid. He's got that Vespian incoming. And now it's up to really TLO to show how that build or how this opening is going to continue to pay off for him. He should be able to hold off some aggression since he's got the Queen out nice and early. And of course the Ling's coming back. But it's still one of these odd situations where actually TLO hasn't done enough with this to warrant the initial expenditure and the investment in it. So, even though we've got a lot of drones now coming out, the Queens and Lynx doing a good job of holding back their stock for the moment, but the Mothership Corps also about to join in with this army. That's going to just help add up the DPS a little bit, able to pick off these Queens a little bit quicker. Time Warp going to go down. Not able to pick off the Queen quite yet, but the second Stalker there too. And now drones are starting to die, and the counter damage is already double what TLO did with his very early spawning pool. So, Patience looking to be starting off this game in a much better sense than he did game number one. Especially since we now see a couple of drones coming out, but TLO with a very nice timing on that Queen is going to be able to pick off the Mothership Core, and with some additional links coming out, forces back these two Stalkers. In total, three workers killed, four patients, one worker killed by TLO, but TLO still up by a single drone 
for the time being. Patience, not yet with his natural base out, is trying to get that wall off completed, trying to stop these Zerglings from being able to make their way in. But more importantly, Patience has also got up a huge amount of gas, so I'm very interested to see how he's going to start spending that, since we don't see a Stargate or any kind of tech for the moment. So, what can Patience do next? The big thing is that he's going to be getting some tech down. He has to. He's got so much gas. Be it a Robo, Stargate, Twilight Council, I don't really care. Even a Forge is good. You can get some upgrades going. But he's got to be spending that recipe. And for the moment, he's got too much banked up. TLO, he's busy droning like a beast. Also adding in a trickle full of Zerglings just to try and aid taking down these rocks since his third's coming up. The one downside to Yonsu for Zergle, and one of the downsides is that obviously this third is a long way away because of these rocks, which means in a defense position, you kind of want to defend around here, but then there's also the path around the back where you can get in quickly. So ideally, you want these rocks done in order to reinforce towards your third base. Patience, getting down that plus one ground attack. An overlord for TLO, though, will scout it down, knows that it is coming. But Patience, he's just expanding. He knows that his natural base was slightly laid, knows that economically, because of TLO's temple opening, he should be able to stay ahead, wanting to really compound on that lead and really get his economy going strong. So gets down that third. The rocks still not getting taken down as of yet. The sentries going for a couple of force fields, trapping a handful of these units out, using a lot of force fields just to kill a couple of lings, but still, this is making a very cost-effective trade at the moment for Patience. Patience does have the option to warp into more units, but his closest pylon is over here as far as I can see. There's another down to the very right-hand side, but again, a long run distance to get over there. The Mothership Corps, though, is with the army. Mass Recall available. Sentries very low on energy and may be forced to Mass Recall out here. No sentries dying as of yet, some lucky force fields, but is going to get out of there, and I think that's a wise choice. Don't want to be losing more sentries to Zerglings, because then you're trading gas for minerals, which is never something that you want to be doing. So TLO, looking to be leveling out this game, he's actually in a good spot at the moment. While his third base was laid, and Patience, his own third, is quite quick down, there's obviously... A good amount of stuff out for TLO in terms of his economy and just map presence with the amount of units that he's got down. His lair's also about to finish up. The Roach is there, so he can go for Roach Hydra. And the tech for Patience is actually very delayed. The one thing that he got early was, of course, the upgrades. He's also going to be starting plus two very fast. He's adding in some more production facilities at the moment. But TLO is really looking solid. Adding in Burrow, too. This is a very interesting little move by TLO getting Burrow down. He's getting the roaches and, of course, roach speed. And there goes the tunneling claws. So, uh, with tunneling claws and roach speed, that means there's two... Wow, okay, two roach runs. I didn't see that initially, but it will have been seen now by Patience, who should have a good idea that this is coming. Tunneling roaches are very effective since they completely cut out any kind of force fields. But Patience already has one observer down. He's getting down the war prison as well. TLO, though, gets a Zergling up into the main base to get some scouting information. He's going to see the Twilight Council researching something, and that's the big scout that he wanted to know the Blink, or likely Blink, was on its way out. TLO has also seen the third base, so knows that his opponent's economy is solid, and that could be one of the reasons that we're seeing this heavy roach play. It's going to be a powerful timing push if he goes for it, and therefore, he wants to end out this game quicker. The Burrow Roaches, a really smart move already basically baiting this army forward into them, allowing them to quickly umbo, get the completes around, a couple of units instantly going down. Nice play there by Tillo. He's about to get Rogue Speed kick in. There's the Mass Regal, but a couple of units left behind. The Rogue is able to shut that down. Tillo researching the 1-1 upgrades, whereas 2-0 getting researched at the moment for Patience. Tillo with the counter-attack, though. Tunneling Claws, five seconds away from completion. Does he have enough roaches to really go for a big play? Well, his army supply says yes. He's at 77 to 38. However, an observer should be with this army somewhere for patience. He's got two of them down on the field, so he's going to be able to see any of these borrowed roaches. So that means while they were tunneling underneath the force fields, patience would be able to take them apart a bit quicker. Dillo losing a couple of roaches here, but does have more and more streaming across the map, making nothing but roaches for the moment. Really putting the pressure on the patient to try and hold this defense. Rocks get taken down. 
still more damage is going to be getting done. And oh no, the Immortal! The Immortal comes too far forward and that is a big win if TLO focuses that down quickly, which he really should be doing, allowing it to stay alive. He needs to focus down that Immortal. I'm amazed that TLO let that live for as long as it did, but finally now gets taken down. The third base of Patience is vulnerable. Another Immortal has popped out. The Roaches getting split apart into much more manageable chunks. Yes, some probes have been killed, but Patience is still up in the work count overall. Quick little burrow goes down with Thundering Claws, that allows the Roaches to heal up exceptionally fast. They're moving in, putting on more pressure still, but a quick blink into the high ground saves a lot. The important thing for TLO here is that he kills off as many probes as possible, while not losing too many of his Roaches. He's producing more with the 1-1 missile attack. He's transitioning into Swarm Hosts with Enduring Locust coming down, but those Swarm Hosts will take a while to get out onto the field. The important thing is the amount of workers that have now been killed, 23. That is a critical amount of damage being done, negating any benefit from this third Nexus instantly. But the Roaches are not done yet. They're still pushing forward. Immortals getting focused down, and they are the big damage dealers against these Roaches. Both Immortals now dead. That leaves the Roaches free reign with the 1-1 upgrades up against 2-0. There isn't even a big upgrade lead for Patience at the moment. And TLO, I think, is going to be very happy with that amount of damage. He took out a lot of stuff. He traded a lot more cost effectively than his opponent. And doing that as a Zerg player is always so positive. So, TLO, three bases. Getting down his first swarm host now. Knowing the patients will be producing immortals. Having seen this many roaches and therefore knowing the patients will not have colossi he's going to be lacking splash damage and that means that once these swarm hosts are revealed it may very well be too late there's no robotics bay down yet no templar archives and without splash trying to deal with swarm hosts for a sustained period of time is next to impossible but patience isn't out of this yet going for some drop play a little bit of harassment forcing tlo back with a lot of units doesn't see any of the swarm hosts for the moment and that's always good but the mothership core is now going to get a little peek at some of those locusts knows what's coming down but TLO has defended his main and is ready to go on the aggressive again more swarm hosts coming through 10 already down and it's anything above 8 tends to be really promising especially when there isn't any splash damage but a good number of observers are down the immortals will deal a good amount of damage to the swarm hosts as well and that just leaves TLO really slowing down the pace of this game that's what these swarm hosts do they really slow it make it a lot more tactical if the swarm host getting to a good position it's going to be very hard for patience to make it work but he's going to blink up into the main base i suspect and now should be able to pick up a couple of units but the roaches are already in the main yes the force fields are good but a complete surround and without the immortals there the stalkers are a little bit vulnerable the locusts coming in as well allowing for very cost effective trading TLO with his signature Nidus Network 2, able to get quick reinforcements through once that's completed. The Observer taking a lot of damage will get taken out and that was quite important. There is one more still on the map, but that is the only one now. Roaches and Swarm Hosts counter-attacking like a boss. This is near a full-on base race at the moment, but unfortunately the Stalkers in the main are getting picked apart. There's a couple of Immortals ready making their way around towards the third base, but Patience knows he's not going to be able to trade here, and so GG's out, meaning the TLO will take the series 2-0. So if you enjoyed the cast, make sure that you like the video, leave a cool comment, and of course subscribe. I get new games up daily, so I'll catch each and every one of you tomorrow for yet another new cast. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.